Hey mates, welcome back to Power and Revolution Geopolitical Simulator 4. Now, a bit of a messy episode last time, but uh, hopefully a bit more structure this time. Let's ignore that. Let's focus on the structure. Now, we're going to need to look at our revenue here. I need to start getting things to be a little bit better. Now, we have a particularly high value-added tax, pretty high income tax as well. Looks like this country is fairly well taxed out. Um, but of course, we've got some nice, juicy looking looking taxes down here. 0.01% is already bringing down $218 million dues. So uh, theoretically, maxing that out would uh, would give us $214 billion, which is huge. It's very, very nice. And I need to consider... Now, sectors that we, we are minority shareholders in are giving us $349 million. Obviously, growing those sectors would give us more. Uh, and of course, taxes will grow based on as the other sectors grow. Uh, but our structural deficit, now this is interesting, our structural deficit is negative, which means that although we have a budget deficit, um, the actual commitments that we have to pay, for example, public service, army, um, border control, healthcare, education commitments, and so on and so forth, are actually less than what we're taking in. So likely what's happened with our total budget, the amount we're spending being so high, is that Poland has, uh, prior to the start date of this game, committed to some infrastructure spending or a one-off spending that may be uh, considerably uh, have, have set them back. Now, I can't really see exactly what that was. There's very little actual information in this game, uh, despite it having numbers everywhere. It's, it's a very poorly designed game in terms of that. Uh, but you do sort of pick it up over time. But the important thing is our debt reimbursement is 23% of our total expenditures, which is fucking massive. Huge. Uh, and paying down our debt gradually will decrease that. Obviously, pumping debt up will will increase that. It's not good. And you can see, though, that uh, between last year, which is before the game started, and this year, um, the expenditure has dropped. So whether it be because interest rates are down or... Uh, they've paid off a whole bunch of debt, I'm not sure. Uh, although Social Security has gone up. So it's interesting, we can look at making some cuts. Cuts are an interesting way of doing things. Let's keep time ticking along. We could take a few cuts in healthcare, for example, um, and save some money. So for example, currently we're reimbursing visits to the doctor, which is what the Americans would call socialized healthcare. Um, if you go to the doctor, you might get doesn't really say exactly, but let's pretend that's two thirds of your money back. We're spending that much to reimburse it. Maybe it's only lower income people or or the two third income people. I don't know how, how this translates exactly, but we do know it translates into a lot of money. Cutting even one star is half a billion dollars. Getting the entire lot gone is 1.8 billion saved, whereas maxing it uh, is costing us 1.9 additional billion. So even though, so that there, these first, uh, what's that, seven stars, are actually cheaper in cost than the remaining final three. So this is really getting quite luxurious spending at the end here. Uh, not something that we're gonna be able to afford, but I could theoretically cut a little bit of healthcare spending. It'd piss people off like you wouldn't believe, but I may be able to consider putting other ones a bit higher. I could put maternity leave up slightly. Mm, it's expensive, we're only cutting our profit. I could modernize medical equipment. Oh, look at that, I could actually that's only a million for each one. So I can max out our modernization of medical equipment. I can cut back how much we're funding people, but max out the, ooh, that's a bit of a problem. Max out that, maybe occupational medicine. Yes, yeah, so occupational medicine and modernizing the equipment. We'll get that right up. It was still saving a shit ton, but hopefully it'll offset some of the anger that people are going to feel. Why can I not confirm? There we go, confirm. That saved us, uh, was that three or four hundred million dollars? How pissed off are people going to be? We'll find out when midnight ticks by in a few seconds. Very pissed off. <laughs> very, very pissed off. But public finances, they are happy about that. Uh, let's have a meeting with the Ukraine. Now, a lot of, you get a lot of these uh, sort of initial meeting uh, messages early on in the game just to sort of draw your attention to the various bits and pieces. Um, tax on low incomes is too high. So the Socialist Labour League, which is another political party, let's have a look at political parties. The Socialist Labour League, the ultra-left people, 
think that uh, we could up the tax on the rich people and drop it. And we are conservative writers. We're the second most right party in this uh, in this country. Yeah, it's just making the streets equal for women, criminalising people who ogle at girls and whatnot. Unfortunately, as much as I'd love to have a nice utopian paradise, uh, it's not going to be possible in Poland for a long time. We really do need to get budget and things under control. So we've made a little bit of a cut there, and we're going to probably cut expensive parts of education. I think literacy aids, no. Education, how much are we spending? Education is only 9.4% of the budget. Health and social security are still a larger portion of it. What's our military looking like? Quick, defense is 10.7% of our GDP, uh, no, of our budget, not our GDP. It's, uh, how do you figure out of GDP? There is a way, I'm sure that it tells you, I could calculate it manually, I'm not gonna bother with that because I don't really care. We do have conscripted soldiers though. Now that is an interesting thing to do here. What we could consider doing is abolishing national service. Now it will save us $2 billion, but it will cut our army down considerably. The people really don't care. They're a bit neutral faced on that. Uh, again, this can be very, very misleading because uh, of the way it's calculated, which I won't go into just yet. Uh, but the poll results is gonna be supported by the lefties and supported by our party, it's only really the extreme right that will not support it. And even then, 35% um, of them are still supporting it. So cutting this back, saving a lot of money, I think is going to be something we're doing. We're also gonna make a, a television appearance to uh, tell the people about it. And just try and, uh, just, we're gonna sell it. Although your economy is among the healthiest- uh, Does that mean they've changed our debt rating? Yes, they've actually bumped us up because we're making the right steps. They said, well, you're not as bad as we thought. So uh, future loans will be cheaper. Let's have a look at this television appearance. I'll let this one play, but in future I won't. They're all the same, roughly. Military service is a relic of a bygone era and no longer corresponds to the standard of a modern and dissuasive army. It's also a very expensive vestige, which often interrupts a student's education or prevents young graduates from entering the workforce. It's a waste of time and money. Therefore, I confidently propose its suppression. There you go. That is supposed to be me. You'll see that the name of that person um, will be, I don't know what the name of the actual uh, Polish prime minister or president, whatever it is, but it will be very, very similar to that. For example, you go over here to the the old USA, the US of A, and you'll see that, how the fuck do I view the leader of them? Why does it have to be so difficult? I could make a uh, meeting request with, here you go, Ronald Trump. So it's instead of Donald Trump, it's Ronald Trump. Ooh, so edgy. Um, oh shit, no, don't want a meeting with him. Not yet, I'll come to the US at a later date. We can trade a lot of stuff. US is very, very hungry for resources. So they're always happy to import stuff at good prices. Uh, either way, we're gonna keep working on this budget. I need to do things gradually. Now that's going to, let's have a look at this army one. It's currently going to the parliament. We'll find out in uh, the 11th. It's, these dates are American style or European style as well. In, in my country, we do day, month, year. So it takes me a few seconds to read these. But uh, so in another week or so, we'll find out and we're almost certainly going to pass. We could meet with people and try to hurry it along, but let's see what the Ukraine wants from us. They want to sell us uranium. Now we need 80, uh, they're selling us 27 and we're not producing any of our own. So we're not gonna hurt our own uh, economy here. They're selling it for much lower. We could get a huge saving on this. Uh, well, it's only a small amount, gradually, totally, but we'll get 73, Ooh, okay. 94, he's come back with a very nice offer. Let's keep pushing. You can't negotiate forever. You can't like nickel and dime them because they will get pissed off eventually. But 75, 90, let's go 81. They accepted 81. So you go, we cut our uranium cost for a third of our uranium purchase by uh, by a significant margin. So it uh, again, will help our economy. Anything running off uranium, which if we're using it, is almost certainly going to be nuclear power. 
What is this? Okay, this is an unexpected pop-up. Yeah, okay. Uh, so the first year, we'll always have these... Don't care. Don't care. Go away, lady. We'll always have these uh, these pop-ups. There's going to be one of these Troubles Brew. There may be one from a sporting event, and there's almost certainly going to be one from a police officer killing an unarmed suspect and then being let off by the courts. Uh, it happens regardless of country, and uh, then annoying, because they bring in the most annoying part of the game. But we'll deal with that in a second. So let's have a look here. New, so we're minority shareholders in all forms of power generation and we're not generating nuclear so perhaps it's being used in the medical services i'm not sure why we would need 80 kilograms of uranium per year i think it was kilograms not tons it may have been tons which seems a bit unreasonable uh, we're producing oil for some reason a very very tiny amount of oil <laughs> interesting interesting uh, we're not consuming any oil at all. Why is that? Uh, probably because of the way it's displayed. Oil here. So we're consuming a lot more than we produce. We are a net importer by uh, $1.1 billion worth of oil. So we'll see if we can do some fracking perhaps at a later date to offset that. Let's have a quick look here. We've got... Our infiltrated agent was spotted and murdered. That's unrelated to the uprising. Let's just have a quick look in here briefly. And we'll keep trying to infiltrate again. Have a look at the file we've got on these people. Uh, saw a violent film, a violent film at Senator. The cinema looks like the mobile phone guy has been removed. He's no longer of concern to us. Uh, but we've got a new guy, Piotr Kwiatkowski. I'm going to butcher these Polish names, uh, but but Piotr P Peter Peter Kwiatkowski uh, wants uh, wants some looking at. They also need to infiltrate, and we'll come back to that later. Now, the uprising in Gdansk, we can let them just handle this themselves, and we could even theoretically appear on television and, and say, come on, people, calm down. We're nowhere near popular enough to that have any effect. It may even rile more people up. We could propose fresh elections, which is a very drastic step. Uh, we could give the army the order to, to charge in and intervene, which is very drastic as well. What we're actually going to do at this point is, given that they are very powerful, we need to up our police funding quite significantly. Uh, it's the, the people as well, so it's just a random event. Often it'll be a uh, an association that particularly dislikes you. But we'll bring in police reinforcements, and uh, we'll see how this goes. Keep in mind that this is after I turned down this turmoil somewhat in the settings. Uh, have a look at the cheat menu here. It is possible to automatically win, but this is an important one to know here. That's not displayed anywhere else. The popularity of the protest movement is 82%. This is a pretty popular movement. So if we let this go on, we're going to it's going to continue to grow. And we're going to continue to lose support. I think the music just cut out there. Um, let's change to another one. Now let's have a look in the city. We have <laughs> we have very, very little. It's the army up there always waiting and tempting us. Uh, they're confined to just the market square at the moment. They can take over these various bits and pieces. They can take over, you know, the museum and loot precious artifacts. They, there's a bank somewhere here. They can take over the bank and loot millions of dollars. If you're playing as a terrorist organization, that's a viable income strategy. We're not going to worry about the military just yet, but we're going to deploy everyone down here as quick as we can and just try to uh, hold out until the police come. Now they're likely, oh, it's a bit fast. Uh, reinforcements are on their way. They'll be here in one day. Uh, oh, shit. No, 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 no. Oh, cool. It's laggy as hell. Uh, you can see why I don't particularly like this part of the game. Okay, we're going to throw a tear gas, tear gas grenade into this mob and see if it has any effect. Come on. Throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it. Oh no, they're throwing Molotovs at us. Oh, the guys have got knocked out and destroyed. Attack. Okay, they're putting up barricades. That's not necessarily bad. Barricades are all right. You're going to stay back here, son. Tear, no. Tear gas. Oh, fuck me. Tear gas them. It's so such a shit interface. It's designed by people who just... No idea what they're doing. Throw the gas grenade. I oh, got them. Okay, we got them. Now there's only six cops left here. We can take down these protesters. Oh, they've knocked that guy out. I 
Attack him, attack him. Uh, come on. Attack them. Okay, one of the demonstrators has been killed, which is not good. And looks like the cops are fighting and they're going to be annihilated. Ah, oh, smashed out. Yeah, the people are rampaging. Have the reinforcements arrived yet? Not yet. We're going to lose this city at this rate. Okay, this is not looking good. We're going to deploy soldiers to strategic locations. So they're not actually attacking them yet, although they will fight back if attacked. Um, but these guys should start. A couple of them will start fanning out to hold things like the regional parliament, the bank, uh, the museum, and the various bits and pieces to try and hold them. So if they continue to attack them. Uh, this is not looking good. You need to just, just attack someone. Yeah, they're spilling out. We're going to lose control here. Our police funding is nowhere near good enough. Police HQ is being blown up with Molotov cocktails. Uh, they've taken the main square. China at the same time has discovered a new plastic technology. Military intervention. Looks like we've shot some people somewhere. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, but either way, we're not looking good. We could well lose. Um, be kicked out here. But the military is coming in here to retake control. Oh no, they're not taking the square. The square is considered an area for people to protest. But they are starting to, to run away. So we haven't arrested them. So they can come back at a later date. They are being driven out. That is interesting. So there's a fire down here. The police HQ has been destroyed. Are our reinforcements arriving yet or not? Yes, okay, reinforcements have arrived. Not looking good. Uh, is that it? Is that the reinforcements? A single police car. Oh, God damn it. Okay, there's only one choice at this moment. We're going to give the order to attack and end the uprising. It's a little bit barbaric, but no choice in the matter. Okay, that's interesting. The military is shooting to kill, which they're not happy about. <laughs> Surprise, paramilitary unit. So that is part of the reason this uprising is so big. They had a whole bunch of guys with guns hidden in the houses who've jumped out and tried to ambush our soldiers. Uh, they should, 28 of them should just cut through. But we'll see how this goes. Through a grenade. <laughs> That's, it's barbaric. It's so barbaric. Uh, I'm so sorry. I didn't want to kill everyone, but... My deal, I suppose. Uh, but this, yeah, they're going to chop through. Actually, they're sprinting away for the most part. They just don't want to engage. It's really only the paramilitary units that will engage. A couple of them been killed. They didn't run away in time. Um, but they're charging in. Victims not happy. Uh, we're losing. What we need to do here is take people's minds off it. So what we're going to do is start funding sports. We're going to announce a huge... Uh, boost for I don't care about doping so much they can dope as much as they want we're going to now national youth movement don't click that unless you're going to militarize your society that's like Hitler's youth <laughs> in fact we'd probably even get rid of that it's just it's just not uh, not to give our Polish brethren a, a bad name here Let's just up everything a little bit we're going to spend 125 million dollars on uh, on sport funding our infiltrated agent is on site. Oh! His first report confirms that his cell is operational and has carried out some preliminary... Well, that is interesting. We've actually managed to... Uh, oh, no, I take that back. I thought we'd infiltrated somebody. What that is, is our, um, our new network in Russia has appeared. And they're now starting to dismantle terrorist groups over in Russia. Which, hopefully, uh, will start to weaken support for the Russian Mafia here. If we can hit them back home... We can, uh, we can start to weaken them over here as well. But I'm not sure exactly how that'll work. Uh, it's very hit and miss whether you can take out terrorist groups. It takes a long, long period of just ongoing fight against them. We have subdued the rebel movement. Excellent timing. I was about to say, we probably should have subdued them. So we've got them down and those rebels are gone. We've pissed off a lot of people. 
uh, they're not being distracted by our, oh no, there we are. Young people, family education has offset it slightly. A whole bunch of different uh, groups have, uh, have been a little bit happier. So we're starting to get people back on side somewhat. To do, uh, we can also up the, um, we're still abolishing national service. What we might do here is actually up the military. Let's get another, let's say, get another few thousand, another 3,000 soldiers to offset the fact that we're losing 84,000 nearly. So we're spending quite a lot more because these are professional, full-time employed people. Um, but we can afford it for now. Let's see how that goes. How was that received by the people? Now, our party will like that. Being being right-wing, they like upping the military. It's important to keep ourselves in power. Uh, and it's important what they call the, the keys of power. I've heard somebody call it the keys of power. And... I don't usually like smooching scenes, but I wanted to tell you that you're well regarded in the barracks. That the guys is would fight to the death for you, very, very I good. Totally agree with them. You've got some guts. He's one of our keys to power. Now, it's unlikely to happen in a democratic country, but say you're playing as you know, Algeria or Nigeria or one of the areas, Botswana, something like that, uh, North Korea, for example, uh, if you try to, if you piss off, the people can be really pissed off, but uh, if you're keeping yourself in power by having your military supporting you, having your party supporting you, then uh, it doesn't really matter if the people living in abject squalor. Uh, and by the other token, you can piss off the military if they have very, very high support of the people. And that's, for example, if you want to in a game, I'm probably going to try in the near future, is to democratize, uh, d democratize North Korea. You can do that, but if you start off too quickly, the, uh, the people don't have enough power and the military or your own party will just off you somewhere. Okay, national service is no longer a thing. Now we often get another boost. So once when you start debating it and then again when you uh, end up passing it, which is difficult when you have a very controversial measure that you're putting forward. There's a plane flying around. Interesting. It's a very slow plane given uh, it's taken several hours to go across Poland. Now either way, we need to keep working on getting our budget. We're currently making 91.51 and we're spending 99.19, so we've cut down quite considerably what we were spending before. Public finances again, um, people are, are impressed with that. That just ticks up every now and then, depending on whether you're improving or, or getting worse. Uh, I need to prepare for our election in the near future, on at the end of this year as well, congressional elections. Oh, hang on, congressional. Is not, are we a president or what are we? Are we a prime minister? I don't know exactly the political system of uh, nomination is, okay, direct elected by the parliament. So um, congressional elections, as they call them in this game, we want our party to win because they're the ones who are going to be voting for us to stay in power. I didn't come in. What we got here, you want to buy from us flowers. Now we're currently producing 12,000 and we need 139,000, so we're not even making enough for our own production. So selling it means our people will be forced to buy from overseas. So if we're selling for cheaper than what our people can buy it for, um, we're actually hurting our own people here. However, if we can get a very good price, we're only selling about a fifth of our total production. If we can get a very good price here, um, I'll actually go higher. Yeah, okay, so we can get a good price here. Let's go 1813, let's go 1797. We're actually going to, <laughs> the, this guy is not a very good negotiator. They've all got different personalities, they're different leaders. Uh, I think it's supposed to be roughly modeled off how they are in real life. For example, Donald Trump or Ronald Trump is a very tough negotiator. You can only click a few times before he says, nah, stuff this and walks away. Uh, typically, uh, but they're actually going to pay us more for our flowers than they typically buy off the world market. So we must have very good quality flowers. Although they're only one, level one, where our technology hasn't improved them. So, hey, I'll accept it. We're actually earning a lot more there. That's good. Now, uh, ooh. let's actually create a quick sales contract. Let's have a quick look. We want to see if we can purchase something that we 
Now, I'll come back to purchases later. Purchases are good for keeping the, the cost of things down for your people um, and, and affecting inflation. If prices go up too high, you get bad cases of inflation. But let's sell something that we produce a lot of. Apples aren't particularly high value. Uh, automobiles we're not making enough of. Biotechnology we're not producing enough of. Housing and construction, there we go. Now, we normally sell it for 100 and this is standardized. You don't buy a house for like $100. It's a, it's a standardized like unit of labor or something. For these intangible things like biotech and, and construction things are uh, intangible. You don't buy them in, in discrete units. They, uh, they just give you numbers to, to work off. Now, they don't require... Bugger, we can't sell that. I was going to say we could uh, make a bit of profit there. Cement, we don't make enough of it. Chemical industry, we do not make enough of. And they have a surplus anyway. What do we have a surplus of? My God, what is Poland? Coal, we've got lots and lots of coal and they need lots of it. We won't sell the full amount because it's, it's rare for a country to buy their full amount because uh, they don't want to be too dependent on the one country. But we could up a little bit the amount of profit we're making here. So let's go five, 551, which is higher. They won't agree to it, but it's a good basis. Uh, I went 551 before. Let's go 533. They, no, okay. For some reason, they weren't happy with that. Probably because something changed. It's, a, again, something I don't particularly like about this game, but uh, likely what happened was the amount of the volume they were willing to buy changed for some reason. Let's go 551 again. Yeah, see, that keeps changing. Why the fuck does that keep changing? Why? Why do you do that? Let's say 400,000. Let's go 450,000. Because that will keep changing for some fucking reason. Let's go 542. 527 is very acceptable. I'm not going to bother negotiating anymore. I will take that because we're upping by more than $103 or just under $103. Uh, per ton and we're selling an additional 450,000 tons at that high price so let's uh let's accept that and what that'll do is it'll actually bump up our coal industry slightly now i could go through and do it for every single thing you can go all the way down you can sell off your gold you can sell off oil even though we're not producing much but at a really good price uh you know tobacco whatever we produce in excess but it is dangerous because we need to keep our our growth in mind, which is shooting upwards. Why is our growth shooting upwards? Hmm. Does that mean our inflation is also shooting upwards? Yes. Now, our inflation is beginning to... Ha, okay, it's not shooting upwards. It's gone up ever so slightly. We do need to keep an eye on inflation. Uh, interest rate. We're not in the euro. If we join the euro, our, uh, our interest rate is set by the other people. So we need to be very careful of inflation. I'm going to up that slightly and it will hopefully begin to curb inflation at the cost of also hurting potential growth uh, you can get growth of you know 150 percent which is insane but your inflation will just shoot through the roof and it will negate almost all of that growth people need to be paid more things cost more purchasing power goes down um, but that's how we're going and so we are gradually turning this budget around i think what we're going to do next episode is consider looking at starting our space program because it's a very very long-term goal for a country that just doesn't have anything at all like it'll take over one year just to build the launch pad and we've only been playing for one and a half months yeah, across two episodes so i will begin to speed up time once we've got things under control but for now that's what we're looking at anyway guys take care and i will see you next time